Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I'm here with my good mate Scott Mason from Southern Sky Images and we just finished early because of mechanical failure our absolutely awesome Fraser Island adventure. Had it all this trip, wildlife encounters, not welcome ones I have to say. Uh, yeah, fair bit of drama on this trip, certainly some mild weather and um, beautiful destinations though. Yeah, most drama I've ever had on a Fraser trip. Scotty nearly got eaten alive, uh, twice actually, from two different animal species. And we show you in the video which animals they were. Uh, could have ended pretty badly. And I also discovered my absolutely top Fraser spot. Very few places I haven't seen. This is one of them. And what a ripper. Gee. Scotty's idea, by the way. Absolutely awesome. One thing before we start. My YouTube channel is completely self-funded and it takes considerable time and effort to create these videos for you. So please help me to grow and continue making these for you by sharing, liking and if you can afford it, please head over to Patreon and become one of my Patreon supporters. With the equivalent of a cup of coffee or maybe even a few cups of coffee per month, you can really help me to remain independent and create these videos for you. If you are already one of my Patreon supporters, thank you very much. You're really helping me out making these videos. So let's get into it. Okay, so I now applied uh, the inox. I probably went, I reckon, through around five of these bottles. I did the underbody, I did the wheel arches, a little bit under the doors. So we will see now how that goes and how that all looks after Fraser. Uh, it's a fairly messy affair. Uh, I first start that on the driveway. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, best to really do that on the grass um, where you can lie underneath and yeah, uh, because the stuff will drip quite a bit. Um, but yeah, otherwise it seems to give a pretty solid penetration. Uh, it needs to dry now for two, three, four days and uh, yeah, I hope uh, that will work. So stay tuned and I'm gonna update you after the Fraser trip. On the way towards Fraser Island and yeah, the weather forecast isn't too great, uh, nor is the weather. However, from Monday onwards, supposedly, yeah, we have less rain. But until then, pretty much permanent rain, and that's how it looks like. Last night, I've got the bush barriers put on the car, which pretty much is a kind of a magnetic paint protection. And yeah, we'll see how that goes now, in all the rain and so on. Looks actually pretty good, much better than I thought it would. And yeah, we'll see how that goes on my way to Coffs now and catching up with Scotty there. Well, Scotty applied Lennox on his as well. Yeah, so I had a break in the, the weather this morning and um, I just wanted to show you a few little tips. So because I'm up in Coffs, I didn't get a chance to apply it at home because it rocked up like literally hours before I left. So um, yeah, these gear bags are really handy. Um, I often store fuel in here for my chainsaw. I actually have stored my chainsaw in here as well in the past. But um, yeah, it just keeps all the fumes out of the cabin, which is really handy with, with wagons. Um, I actually found this dispenser to be a lot better to apply than the, the one that came pre-filled, uh, purely because you can adjust mm. the, the spray um, and I made a rookie error as well, so, because I didn't have much time before it started raining here this morning. Um, I just went nuts, jumped underneath, parked it on the grass like Stefan did, and just pumped it in everywhere, jumped underneath, and actually really wanted to do my uh, wheel studs. Did well, you do the brakes? I, <laughs> I did the brakes. <laughs> so. In my rush, in my haste, I, um, obviously you get spray through onto the onto the rotors, so it wasn't a big issue. I just did a. I recognised that I'd stuffed up, so I went for a drive um, on a quiet road, and got up to like you know 60, 70, hit the brakes, and yeah, it burned out. Um, also, it oversprayed onto the exhaust. That burned off really quickly though, so um, yeah, really good application actually. Took me about 
35, 40 minutes. Yeah. So, yeah. Same here. Yeah. On all previous Fraser Island visits, I accessed via Inskip Point. This time we decided to start from Heavy Bay, as Scotty had family there, so we could see what the weather does before heading over to Fraser. The indigenous Bachala people, including the Kabi Kabi, are the traditional residents of Heavy Bay. Bachala means translated shy people and indicates that they did not communicate with people outside of their family group. The first recorded European sighting and naming of Heavy Bay was made by James Cook in 1770. At this time he assumed that Fraser Island was part of the mainland as due to the shallow waters he did not travel far enough south into Platypus Bay. Heavy Bay is situated around three and a half hours north of Brisbane and during the migrating season from July to November it is one of the best humpback whale watching spots in the world. It's also a popular entry point to Fraser Island for overseas visitors as you can fly into Harvey Bay and catch a ferry straight to Kingfisher Bay Resort on Fraser Island. You also have a big variation of tours you can book in Heavy Bay, which help you to discover Fraser Island. One good little tip here is, um, as you can see, it's really quiet here today. There's hardly any cars, but it does get quite busy. So um, a good tip is be set up beforehand. So have get yourself aired down, try to be last on the barge. That way, when you get to the other end, so you've got a reverse on here, you're first off at the other end, you can just hit the track straight away and nail it. You don't get stuck behind um, ill-prepared people. Stefan just doing last minute prep. The stick method. Stick. What brand, brand is that, mate? If you are planning to take a trailer over to Fraser Island, just be aware that you will need to reverse it onto the barge at Board Harbour. As you can see on the dark clouds in the background, the weather forecast for the next few days wasn't too good and there was even a cyclone forecast. So we weren't really sure what to expect on Fraser and we're hoping that we could stay dry. So, still in high range but uh, center diff lock is in and we on sand. I just hope we don't get a big storm tonight again. Last night was raining quite a bit and uh, find a reasonably sheltered spot. We certainly could see that Fraser Island also had a bit of rain as there was a lot of water on the tracks and some good puddles. Yeah, that looks quite interesting here. Looks like uh, People used to get stuck here with all their wood. No one else around. This is all ours. Oh, the water's beautiful. Oh. Lovely. I'll come out here. Let's get through. Well, we reckon we've just found the ideal alternative to Lake Mackenzie. It's just as pristine, the water's beautiful. White sand, you have a bit of reeds, the water temperature absolutely stunning. And uh, one big factor going for it. You probably noticed something missing in the background there. People. <laughs> the only, we've got this place to ourselves, so I don't think we'll tell you where it is just yet. Maybe if we um feel we'll generous see, at the end yeah. of the trip. Yeah. Can't Good stuff. Beat it, mate. It's a beautiful start, first day. We're on that island now for less than two hours and we're already swimming in some of the cleanest water you find on earth. It's like bath, it's beautiful. Yeah. You may have guessed already the name of these amazing like. If you haven't, we will reveal the name a little bit later.
we plan to stay the first night at the Crotodos and the Palma wreck. This is probably one of the worst spots uh, to stay for the night on Fraser due to the midges and mosquitoes, but we wanted to catch the sunset and sunrise. Ah, this is stunning. You can see the current in here, eh? Yeah. Look at that. So we've just arrived at this lovely little spot. What's it called, Stefan? It's called Deep Creek. Deep Creek. It's, um, yeah, amazing. It's so peaceful here. You, the west coast, you just don't get the sound of those waves. But, you, you know, the upside of that is you can hear all the birds, the wildlife. Oh, definite evidence down here of... Yeah, that's all they used to uh, they used to do the logging and got the logs down here had a big pier and yeah loaded them on the barge which you see still lying there and then shipped it up to the mainland been here 30 seconds and already been bitten by a midgey so there's uh, quite a few little spots on Fraser which are like this uh, right up and down the west coast and uh, on this trip I'm pretty sure we'll be able to show you all a lot of them, but, uh, as you can see here, evidence of times past. Here we're at um, obviously at low tide. Have a look at Stefan. <laughs> Whoop! Yeah, you bit of quicksand, mate. That is quickly in here, and it's going for deeper. Ho <laughs> <laughs> ho! Last time I was here, we didn't really stay overnight. We just came here during the day and it was high tide, so we couldn't walk to the shipwreck. I um, was looking forward to walking there and uh, inspecting it a bit further. I reckon later we'll fly the drone, Scotty, yeah? For those of you that have never seen Stefan bog before. <laughs> to save the camera, mate. <laughs> that, it seems it has a freaking end. I was watching you from a distance, that's a classic. <laughs> and I've got the freaking mouth flies coming now. Oh, wow. There you go. Sitting on me. <laughs> so, mud flies landing. I can't move. Oh, this is seriously impressive. Yeah. Fall no. over again. <laughs> Just fall over again. <laughs> Do it for the viewers, come on. I hope you have it on film. <laughs> no, I missed it, I was taking stills. Yeah. God, it stinks. So you, you've got it now, huh? Look at that. My either camera or the other hand with the cap. I chose that one. I think we've really lucked out here. This is honestly, uh, it's really cool. We've got, we just had the most amazing light. Hopefully we'll get it again this afternoon. The sun's gonna set over there. Wow. This is something a lot of people don't get to see coming onto Fraser. And it's precisely the stuff we wanted to try and capture this time. Particularly our mate here in the mud. <laughs> the mud crap. You could have done a better job. Come on, uh, let's go, Scotty, come on, hurry up. Scotty, can you come over here quick? No, no, no. Ah, no, that's honestly the shot here. Yeah. You need that angle. Oh, that's right, I'll get it with the drain. Ah, you need that angle. See, some wise person. You see that board? Mm. Looks like someone slipped on it. Mm, Just reading no, the sign I here. I tried it, how slippery it is. I didn't actually, but it isn't obviously the most stable of boards. <laughs> 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 
Scotty. Come on. <laughs> you might Come on, give nah. me the freaking hand. No way. Come on. <laughs> I'm hand there. Let's go. No. I've got the freaking camera. Let's go. Should I? Comment below. Should I or should I not? I think you've got to be suffering. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh. Uh. A little bit further up Deep Creek lies the Palmer, a steamer which was built in 1844 in Paisley, Scotland. It originally was a twin screw steamer with 267 gross tonnage. She was 43 meters long with an 8 meter beam and a draught of 2.5 meters. She was used to carry gravel from Woody Island to Rangan from 1935 to 1937. Later she also uh, carried logs from Fraser Island to the mainland and a number of vehicles and horses. In 1942 the Palmer was abandoned at Deep Creek where she remains now. Given the weather forecast, I really wanted to have the awning up and put my stretcher under the awning. So it was time to set the Super Pack Easy awning up, as well as my Helinox Ultralight Camp Chair. That is our evening spot. Watch the rest of the sunset. Not a bad spot at all. Wouldn't mind being on the boat there as well. Yeah. Morning. Hello. Yeah, just got up after a reasonable wild night. How was your night, Scotty? Really? <laughs> Shit, did you get wet now? Like how was it? I had midges in my swag. I had mosquitoes. Oh shit. Look at this. Shit. I had a bad, bad night. Bad night. So I got up. I uh, don't know if you heard me, but yeah. got up and got some good lightning shots. But mate, I'm oh, dead yeah? tired. Eh? I've not slept. I just feel horrible. Shit. Look at my back, what does that look like? I'm oh, probably alright. Uh, no. No? No. Oh, mate. Shit. How, how did they, they get in your I swag? I had, you know, you, you see me set it up. It was yeah. always zipped up. So they've obviously got through the mesh during the night. Shit. When I was setting it up, you know, I had it all closed all the time. Yeah. Oh, man. Not good. No, no. Scotty's not a happy dude today. Yeah. I think we better make sure we get away here. Yeah. I heard it just at night. You lie in bed and you just hear the mosquitoes yeah. left front center. Mate, I was fucking myself the whole night. Bang, bang, bang. Everywhere. Shit. That is amazing here. The inland tracks, the sandy tracks, full of water from that rain last night. There, yeah, tons came down there, that's for sure. This is the end of part one of our epic Fraser adventure. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and possibly even support me at Patreon to help me making these videos. In the next episode we have to conquer some deep water crossings which will have the water over our bonnet, we find fallen trees on our tracks and have two unpleasant encounters with dingoes. One of our vehicles will fail to proceed so make sure to tune in for episode 2. That's the end of Scotty.